welcome back to the pulse of willie and al how's it going today bro oh pretty good man pretty good uh you know it uh, was the first sunday of football which means i watched about 11 hours straight of football by myself and it was glorious yeah man it's uh yeah. I, I was pumped i only got to watch the first three and probably 15 minutes of the four o'clock games but uh it was really nice i cooked up a smorgasbord worth of food uh, Woo! some really good wings some pizza homemade cows up my wife was very happy so oh we also did uh slow cooker mac and cheese so oh, shit. what kind of uh what kind of mac and cheese uh what kind of uh, calzone. Uh, we actually, I did a Korean beef style calzone. So I've been on this, on this kick lately with uh with some Korean stuff. So we've been we've been doing some work with that. But uh, it was great. It was enjoyable. I was very full. And uh, yeah, even for my podcast, you know, I do streaming before the game. Yeah. Uh, it took me about twenty five minutes in to realize that I was uh muted. Um. So, <laughs> thank you for the. I kept, you kept mentioning I kept the screen it. Screen going because I was like, at some point, either I'll hear him or I won't. Yep. Either way, I'm giving him the love. Either way. So I, I was definitely losing viewers. Uh, <laughs> the, the few that I had, but uh, we will be better about that next week. And uh, I, most of it was because, and I wasn't aware of this. Twitch Studio just disassembled in May. Which I wouldn't have known because I only used it during the NFL season. But now it's like I have to use OBS, which I'm good at. But yeah, uh, just different. It's just different. Yeah. So would would uh, have been a nice heads up before before yeah. Sunday because I yeah. had some really good stuff that I covered, like really good. Uh, but that's okay. So if you're good at reading lips, you can check it out. If you're not, yeah. then uh, sucks to be you um yeah but, i'm good at a lot of things uh that was not one of them though. yeah so. yeah yeah so uh yep. today we are bringing you guys episode 54 uh which is our week one roar episode and today we are going to be covering the top stories in week one of the nfl so uh big takeaways for the weekend let's just start with one of them right anthony richardson is definitely a rookie and I i'm gonna hand it to you first Woo! because i want to know your thoughts on this and what you feel I I felt like it was a game that red that that whole Texans Colts game red zone kept showing a lot of because that game got real weird real good too. Anthony Richardson did one of two things. He either was throwing that like sixty yard bombs, mm -hmm. which that that touchdown was insane. Like he just launched that like a Nerf football in the air. It was a straight and piss missile, dude. It really was. <laughs> it really that, was that the definition of a piss missile. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm like. There's no way he actually threw that. And then I'm watching it travel in the air. And I'm I'm like... Uh, and it just lands in Pittman's arms. Uh, no, it was Pierce. It was Alex oh, Pierce. Pierce. I'm like, Pierce yeah. is going to catch this ball. No way. Like, And yeah. it was it was a dime right on, yeah. right on the money. Uh, yeah. That, that guy's got three, a cannon. <laughs> he had three 50-yard throws, but then there were the interceptions as well. Yeah. And, uh, um, <laughs> and, and, I, and I texted you this, and I was like, hey, man, like, this is kind of like his rookie year because he didn't really play a bunch last year. Yeah. So I think you're going to see a lot of growing pains with him. He, and he definitely like, from what I watched, like he missed a lot of open receivers, which was kind of the knock mm -hmm. on him coming out of college. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but man, can he run though? Jesus. Yeah. I, I think, I think he spent most of the off season kind of uh, dealing with the hate that people were, throwing his way for kind of saying he's soft and stuff like that that rushing touchdown he had <laughs> uh, yeah he he bulldozed in there for that uh I, I just think you know like you mentioned it there's a lot to work on um there's some good and uh, i mean even with all the stuff to work on i mean you could tell this team has potential they just went toe to toe with a, a very good playoff team from last year uh, yeah and and this team in houston looks much improved and they just went down to the wire with them so yeah i i don't know i really i mean we're going to talk about them a little bit later but man like i i like you know what, what i saw out of out of anthony richardson you know what it was with the coles it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of houston last year where like they're a young team that doesn't know how to close out games yeah uh especially and I, and right I now gonna, and i think you're gonna see that a lot this year but like Houston kind of figured it out along the way and they learned how to close out games. And, uh, I think, I think the Colts are going to get there, man. They there's, there's hope. Yeah. I there's mean, hope. Jonathan Taylor, I wasn't too impressed with his stats just looked 
terrible. And like, yeah, he had the one touchdown and that kind of saved his day in fantasy. But past <laughs> that, it just didn't. I don't know. There's a lot of people that I think overdrafted him this year in fantasy, even with Richardson being there. It's the, the, the time that Jonathan Taylor was elite and the best running back hands down in the NFL was the year Carson Wentz was there. Uh, I mean, yeah. they, they, they were going to hand it off 30 times, but there was two good running backs on the field on, on Sunday. And he was the lesser of the two. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, like I said, we're going to get into Houston here in a bit, but uh, in terms of the Colts and Anthony Richardson, uh, I think things are, are looking up for them. Uh, definitely with what they're going to be able to do. And plus he, he missed two wide open throws to AD Mitchell that, you know, one of which I think would have been a touchdown. Um, yeah. The other one, a deep, a deep throw, but um, let's move on real quick. Unless there was something else you wanted to add to that. No, no, that's, that's no, that was it. That was just it, out of all the early games on red zone. That seemed like one that like just kept going back and forth. And I was like, Oh man, like it yeah. was, it was fun to watch. Very, I mean, very good. No, no. Uh, yeah. I won't say it. I won't say it, but uh, we'll move on. The chiefs are the chiefs are the chiefs are the chiefs. Uh, I don't just, know why we picked against. I, I don't know why I pick against them. I, yeah, I, I don't I, know why anyone does at this point because it's just like they always seem to figure it out, uh, and it kind of makes you wonder. You know, Steve Spags, he was kind of sought after in the off season for a, a coaching job, uh, but he said he wanted to stay. And him and Andy Reid together—that's just like a, a brutal combination of yeah. the two of them. But I also feel like having Mahomes on offense, he's just gonna figure it out. And then having Chris Jones on defense, he's like the Mahomes of the defense. They just are going to figure it out. Chris Jones, I, I felt like he was blowing up every third play <laughs> on Baltimore. Like, it, and a lot of times he didn't get credit for the tackle, but man, he made life difficult. Like, Very difficult. It showed that, like, they just stopped giving the ball to Derrick Henry, which yeah. is wild. And again, Baltimore, again, just 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 god damn it just run the ball like yeah. it, what what kind of messed them up too though was like they and i i remember texting you this their tackle got called for a lot of like illegal formations early yeah. because he was like lined up too far back mm -hmm. and like i guess they're really gonna enforce that this year and like they made they kind of made it made it a point and yeah they they definitely did and there was a lot of a lot of them were very upset criticizing the refs after about that um, man, it just, I don't know. The one thing in that game that kind of bothered me, uh, and got under my skin was the Roquan Smith hit out of bounds on Mahomes. And then I agree. And then for him to come back in the press conference and kind of threaten the guy was like, I don't even know who that guy is. Well, if you don't know who that guy is, how come he's in street clothes? And you said his number during the press conference, 83, yeah. or whatever. So like, clearly, you know him, but like, you're being an ass, man. Like, don't don't hit a hit yeah. a. First of all, don't hit the the gem of the NFL, uh, out of bounds. You're you're probably going to get called for that. But also, don't yeah. be upset when you do get called for a late hit or someone comes back and pushes you because I mean he was clearly out of bounds at that point. Oh yeah, and it and, just, and Smith was like coming at him like a missile. You're yeah, like, well, this is 15 yards. Yeah, yeah. It's it just too bad. But um. Can we can we real quick? I, I just the one thing about the Chiefs game that I Xavier Worthy, man, that guy is fast. He's paying dividends. Holy yeah, shit. yeah. Um, and the memes Woo! that have come out since him are awesome. Uh, really good. It seems like him and Rasheed Rice are going to form a, a formidable duo there. Um, and that's with even without Marquise Brown, who I know you're not high on, but you know him as a even a third receiver in that offense. Um, you know, still still pretty good. Uh, yeah, for that team, and like Kelsey wasn't even really an option. No, like, he didn't need game. to be. Like, he, didn't, he didn't need to be. Nope. So no, nope. um, that play where Worthy scores the touch, the I think it's the first touchdown where Marlon Humphreys just blows the coverage. Was it? He thinks he has, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He thinks yep. he has the safety on top, but he, he doesn't. And Worthy just runs right by him. You're yeah. like, well, you're not catching him. Like it's, it's weird, and you see this sometimes in track and field as well, where it looks like they're not running that fast, but you have to put it in yeah. perspective. But these are supreme athletes. So what may not look like that fast really is super fast on the field. Um, and, and they showcase that right in game one. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it and just... I think 
big. I think too with the Ravens, real quick. I them losing McDonald as a coordinator, like we saw this last year with the Eagles, and I and I I I thought that Baltimore had the talent on defense, and I know they lost a bunch of guys, but like a little evident that Mike McDonald's not coaching the defense anymore. Well, that that's interesting. You bring <laughs> that up because that's actually the next point we're segueing into uh, with yeah. the Ravens, and just that they they might be in real trouble this year, not only on offense but defense too. Uh, they, they just, you know, they reverted back to the same things they were doing. And you kind of mentioned that in the playoff game that they just stopped running the ball. And, and you, you have a, probably one of the best running backs, not arguably it's true. One of the yeah. best running backs of the last decade that you just brought in. And then the John Harbaugh ends up saying in the press conference, like, Oh, we're, uh, we don't plan on giving him 30 carries a game. Well, how about 20? That's dumb. How about 20? I mean, I don't, yeah. I understand not trying to overuse them, but how about 20 at least? Because what was it? He it's, got 11 carries? That's not going to do makes, it. It makes me sad because they were running this play that was really effective where essentially Lamar was faking the option one way mm-hmm. and then just pitching it to Henry going the other way. And like the def- you could tell the linebackers are like, what do we do? Yeah. Like we can't. And like that, they just like went away from that. Like, mm-hmm. I know you can't run that same exact play every time, but like they were running Henry out of the pistol, which was like cool to watch. And like, it was working, but then they just like stopped doing it. And you're like, <sighs> yeah, I, I mean, and, and listen, I know it's, it's Patrick Mahomes uh, against that defense. You know, he made them look a little silly a few times, um, but they, they definitely are going to miss some of the guys that have, have gone. Clowney's not there anymore. You've got Queen that's gone too. Geno Stone's not not back at safety. Like, it's just the, – yeah. not to mention McDonald. Like, it, coordinators matter. It's like, Yeah, we it's, learned that last year. It's, it's yeah. like the 12th guy, man. You, you really got to – especially coordinators that are very good. And you're seeing that. We're seeing it more often than not. These coordinators have a great season, and they're in a, a head coaching position the next year. Um, I I think like with the O line, I think that's fixable. I think they just need time to gel. Yep. I, I think they're gonna be fine there. But like you saw it though, like Lamar was like Lamar probably ran for like a hundred yards backwards with all the scrambling he was mm-hmm. doing. Like, good lord! Like, well, the yeah. amount of people get bringing him under scrutiny and and stuff like he's doing what he can out there. Yeah, okay, he misses two of those throws on the last drive in the end zone. I get that. Like. Oh, okay. that Zay Flowers one. Yeah, it, oh, it was. Yo. It's tough, man. But to to say that, like, oh, they lost the game because that because the refs called Isaiah Likely out. No, they lost the game before that, man. They really did. It just, I I can't stand when I hear fans uh, post about that on Twitter, and uh, you know they're basically blaming something on one individual play. It's like there's a culmination of things that add up to what what happened in that and resulted in that loss. But, you know, uh, I just I hope they get it figured out. But if they don't, you know, there there's some other tough teams in that division. Um, yeah. Yeah. That likely play at the end, too. I at first, like everybody else, thought he caught it. And then how close he was to having his toe on the line, man. And what's wild, too, is they were going to go for two. Yeah. Harbaugh was like, fuck it. We're going for two. And I'm like, I love it. Not. I don't think they would have gotten it because, like, they couldn't figure out goal line plays for the life of them. But, like, I like the moxie. But I'll take the chances of uh, not throwing the ball and handing it off to Derrick Henry for, for a <laughs> two-point conversion. Yeah, the, the going for two, that's a Dan Campbell move right there for a well, win. That's, that's a Dan Campbell move if I ever saw it. Well, let me tell you a Pete Carroll move. And, you know, I could hand this to you or I could stand <laughs> back and throw it for no friggin' reason. So... <laughs> You know, it's, you know, we we could do it that way too. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, you're right. It's a Dan Campbell move for sure. Uh, the, the interesting thing about that division I wanted to point out is the Steelers are in first place in that division and they are one and O all three teams, other three teams lost the, the Browns, the Bengals and the Ravens. And the reason that's kind of interesting is because last year that division pumped out a lot of very good teams into the playoffs, but the Steelers are in first place and one and O without scoring a touchdown in their game. Yeah, I. It felt like TJ Watt was in the backfield a lot. Okay. He got like called. I think there was like, because I had that game on for a while, and it like at one point he had like, I think like two or three sacks and a forced fumble and a fumble recovery, negated because of penalties. Yeah, 
His stat line was like a full game stat line of what was just negated. Yeah. Yeah, and he just was a problem. I mean, the the ones where he gets off quick, I know, I get it. Like, you got to call him on that. But I'm okay with him getting a penalty there because if it doesn't get called, he's getting a quarterback. It's going to happen. The the one where he was offsides, that looked, to me, that looked close. Mm. That that looks kind of, but... I get it though because he has a reputation of playing it right close to the line like that. Like it's the same thing. Like when they call the tackles for like jumping real quick, I don't know how refs are able to do it. I, I think they've got I don't a either very yeah. hard job because to be able to distinguish who leaves early and of course if you slow it down in slow mo, you can see the guys that jump quick, but it's very difficult to tell to the human eye if they're moving mo- moving early or not. Um, yeah, but. Uh, let's move into some overreactions, underreactions. This is going to be kind of fun. Uh, uh, first one that we've got, the Bengals are cooked. Well, they're cooked because of our Lord and Savior, Jacoby Brissett. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tom Brady uh, no. reincarnated. You got it, baby. Uh, no, it was, it was a weird game. Um, the Bengals, uh, the Patriots just kept running it to the right side with Stevenson, and that just seemed to be the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the Bengals in week one. This is the third year in a row they've blown a week one game. Yeah. They, um, they get off to a slow start. I I don't know if it's an overreaction for me. I, I, I'm kind of in the middle just because, like, they play the Chiefs this week, and they could very clear, quickly be 0-2. Yeah, they, they could. They could. Yep. Um, um, in fact, I think it might work to their benefit if they are. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy, but um, they're a team not – Higgins wasn't there. Uh, New England yep. is a very tough team to score against. Uh, yeah, their offense is, is hot garbage, but their defense is very good. Uh, so it's not easy to put up points against them. And you you, you yeah. saw that all last year. Uh, and that's even without Judon there. I mean, they they were able yeah. to, to to be able to to slow the game down and contain it. They run the ball fairly well too, which is a, a potent you know combination of of two things. But for me, it's an overreaction. I think the Bengals are going to bounce back. September is always a tough month for them, but then they start going and, and cooking, and then Joe Burrow yeah. and, and Chase together they can they can rattle off a bunch of wins together. Uh, yeah, and again, it's not necessarily about winning your division anymore. Now it's yeah, just go get in the playoffs. Yeah, you got to get in the playoffs, man. And if they're able to do it, they're a tough out no matter who they play. Uh, that's yeah. not a team that I know anybody that will be like, oh yeah, the Bengals were a wild card team. I don't want to play them, not at all. Uh, shout out to the Bengals offensive line for the like what feels like the millionth year in a row where we hear, oh, it's much improved. Man, Joe Burrow, man, just like, jeez. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's running for his life. Now he looks like Eminem yeah. running for his life, so. Yeah, it really does. But, oh. yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah. We've already won more games than I was expecting, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think you won more than I was expecting, too, so. Uh, right, we're going to the Super Bowl, baby. There you go. Great. Right. Uh, now, uh, next one we've got, Vikings will make the playoffs. Not with Sam Darnold as their quarterback. They Ooh. played the Giants. The Giants are awful. They are a dumpster fire. <laughs> Everyone's getting fired this season. Everyone. Dayball, uh, the, the GM, uh, like, it, the more, like, that goes by, the time that goes by, that that clip on Hard Knocks where he's just like, ah, we're going to let Saquon go. And Mara, the, like, CEO coming down be like, I really don't want to lose him. Like, that would make me very angry. Yeah, and then you watched what Barkley did to uh, to Green Bay, and you're like, yeah. well. Well, also, you know, I think I yeah, said Yeah, no, the Vikings. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, the, the Vikings, as long as they have Sam Darnold as their quarterback, they're playing San Francisco this week. So, like, Sam Darnold's going to go back to being Sam Darnold real quick. Yeah, he may come back to earth pretty quick. It, it's an overreaction yeah. for me, too. I, I think they're they're going to regress back towards the mean a little bit. Uh, d- just real quick, I wanted to mention on the Barkley thing. Uh, did you did I send you that clip of, of I think it was the GM sitting there, and he's like, I- I'm going to have a really tough time sleeping if he ends up in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and that yeah. was like, uh, well, here we go. Uh, that's going to go down as one of the worst uh, b- like moves that they could have made because – I imagine that team with 
Saquon and Malik Neighbors, they're a much better team with both of them on that team. Um, yeah. Now it's kind of – and n- nothing against Devin Singletary, but Daniel Jones, uh, I mean, they, they're figuring out pretty quickly $40 million maybe isn't enough for, for a quarterback. Um, or maybe I not- already feel – I already feel bad for Malik Neighbors after one game. Free yeah, Malik man. Neighbors. Do it already, please. It's going to be bad. Somebody. Um, uh, next one we've got. Jaden Daniels is the best rookie quarterback. I, I'm i going to say that's a – I'm going to say that's kind of a right in the middle because, like, statistically, out of all the rookie QBs, he had the best stats. So you're not wrong. And, like, man, I I knew he was fast, and I just assumed in the NFL that, like, guys could catch him. That's where I was wrong. I was wrong. He's quite good. (laughs) And Tampa's got a decent defense. Like, and he was just kind of – he ran on him for 88 yards by himself. Like They're going to be playing from behind a lot. And uh, he's – they're they're still – he's got to develop some rapport with Terry McLaurin. But, I mean, Washington's not as – bad as i thought they were gonna be i expected that i think they're bad i I thought they were gonna get blown out real bad by tampa bay and they got beat handily but yeah he looks promising as a as a quarterback i i i I mean you you compare him to the others that we saw bo nicks caleb williams i mean it's it's not even close man he was yeah light years ahead of both of them uh from, from the looks of it um all right, uh, let's move on to the next one. I feel like we kind of touched on this already, but the Patriots are good. Winning the Super Bowl. No hands, ifs, or buts about it. Yeah, overreaction for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, yeah, no. I, I'm, I, I'm just joking. You no, know, this was a this was a nice win. Um, I think the defense is going to keep them out a lot of games this year. I, offensively, like, you can't just keep running to the right on a good defense. They're going to snuff that out real quick. Yeah. And they play Seattle this week and Seattle's going to Seattle's going to show them what's up like real quick on def- defense. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening with that. Uh, yeah, you're right. McDonald's got a good team with, with them. Uh, Seattle played well this past weekend, but just barely snaked past Denver. Uh, but that was also a fluke week one. What I keep forgetting is week one's a fluky week. Yeah, it is. You never know who to pick. Like even in fantasy, you're like, I don't know who to start. Like, I'm just going to start everybody that I drafted and like, just go from there. And then mm-hmm. like, yeah. So it's tough. Uh, next one up. Packers season is in jeopardy. I, th- if Malik Willis is your backup quarterback, Yes. Yes, because he came in for two plays, okay? He threw an incompletion, or I'm sorry, he threw a completion, but I think, and it was like a a very short one, and then took a sack on the final play of the game. Mm -hmm. The one thing you can't do. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I I don't know how much time Jordan Love's going to miss. I assume it's going to be at least, wait, did did they say how much time? Uh, Yeah, well, so there's rumors from Adam Schefter that it's not going to be the initial four to six weeks predicted. They're not putting him on IR. Uh, so by doing that, oh. that means he might be back sooner than they think. Um, but it didn't look good uh, in the in the head. Well, uh-huh. I thought initially he tore his ACL. The way he just took off his helmet was like screaming. I was like, "Oh, he tore his ACL." Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, which um, is sad because it, he's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, especially, yeah. sorry, John, but what he did to Dallas last year—that was we got to see like a a good promising young quarterback in this league. And it's, it's going to be good. Um, yeah. Um, but I, I think though, like, yeah, I, I, I'm a little worried if they rush him back because like, if I'm green Bay, honestly, like I, I put him on IR, like to be honest with you, cause you can like, even if for, if you put him there for, for like four weeks, cool. Like, you know what I mean? You could still sneak in a, a, in the playoffs with a wild card. Yeah, in the NFC, yes. I don't think it's possible in the AFC. Uh, oh, I agree. So, so it's so I think I don't think their season's over, but he's got to come back and he's got to be healthy. Um, My fear is if they rush him back and then he he tears it. Yeah, that's the, the fear. This is the thing: the the majority of those guys, and like this doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but the majority of those guys in fantasy are irrelevant now. 
uh, because Malik Willis has shown us what he can do, and it's very little. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's gonna in this system he'll flourish under Matt Lafleur, but we saw him in Tennessee and it was very ugly at times uh, and minimal too. Mm. Um, okay, moving on. The Falcons are bad. Um. Kirk Cousins is old. Let's start there. Wait, what? What's his name? Okay. Oh, Kirk Cuckins. Kirk Cuckins. Uh, yeah, I. Man, he couldn't do anything to save his life. And as somebody that has Bijan Robinson and Kyle Pitts, boy, let me tell you Kyle how frustrated. Kyle Pitts did all right. He did all right. Yeah, Pitts got a touchdown. Robinson did enough. Um, yeah, Kirk now, Cousins. If you're, man, a, like, if you're a Drake London owner, <clears throat> this guy. Then you're not as happy, but yeah. I think it will take time. I, I do as well. Um, I think though, and I I don't think that the Falcons are going to cave into this, but I do think Cousins has got to figure it out quickly, or else everybody's going to start calling for Penix. Yeah, I. This is the main issue that I had watching that game, and again, watching Red Zone, you only see clips of it, but every single time, the it's like. When someone when you're playing poker against someone and they have a tell like they scratched their neck or uh you know they they play with their nose or whatever it is when you can tell mm-hmm. that, that what they're going to do you know and the formations when they were running out of pistol you knew every single time what was going to happen and that yeah. it, it just doesn't bode well it's like the defense knew the plays and and that's what it felt like with Pittsburgh uh I mean yeah Mike Tomlin's amazing but uh, I just it felt like they knew what was coming every single time they need to mix that up. And, yeah. And if they are able to, it could be really beneficial for them. But they're, they're going to have to figure it out. I, it's an overreaction for me because I don't think they're bad. Uh, I just no. think they need to get it figured out. Yeah, it just felt – it just was them running it on first and second down and then mm-hmm. it being like third and seven. And, like, I know you love Kirk Cousins, but, like, I – yeah, like they had a chance to drive the drive to like tie the game, and at no point was I like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna do this." Yeah. I was like, "No, this game's over." It's different. It was different in Minnesota. Uh, his line is geared more towards running the ball. There in yeah. Atlanta, they're built to run the ball, and and they're maulers that they have on that on that offensive line. So, you know, it, it remains to be seen. But I hope they get it figured out. I really do. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, Saints are going to make the playoffs. Your boy, Derek Carr, Captain Checkdown. I getting to watch that was just like just it just felt like eating like shoveling shit in my mouth because I was like I've said so many bad things about him that I was like <laughs> you know what I deserve this I deserve this but then I thought about it for a minute and I was like I think Greylock could probably have hung fifty on Carolina. <laughs> Carolina's just bad. <laughs> Yeah, and they were su- supposedly made a ton of improvements in the offseason, and it just still looks like they don't know how to protect Bryce Young. You want to hear a sad stat? Sure. If if Caleb Williams wins this week and Bryce Young loses, Caleb Williams will have the same amount of career wins as Bryce Young. That's ins- that's wild. <laughs> yeah. That's wild, man. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to see it. I don't think the Saints are going to make the playoffs, but everyone seems to think. I, I just, I don't know. The whole vibe of that team is that everyone hates Dennis Allen. He hates himself. He hates his players, all of that stuff. So it doesn't make me feel good or want to pick them in any scenario. Uh, Alvin Kamara looked really good. They actually gave him yeah. a, a boatload of carries in addition to, you know, his six catches out of the backfield. But, um, I mean. Yeah, he looked a lot like the old Kamara. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was nice. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Deshaun Watson is cooked. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I watched a lot of this game just because I wanted to uh, hear what Brady did in the booth, and uh, I, we can talk about that at some point, maybe. But like, man, he don't pay a guy that's a piece of shit that much money. Like, don't. Like, don't trade him. Don't, like, don't trade for a guy like that. Like, yeah. the Browns are reaping what they sell right now. And, like, yeah. And they're going to have to get rid of, like, a bunch of dudes this offseason 
just to not be over the cap because of this contract. Yeah, it's um, I mean, you kind of get what you deserve, right? Uh, yep. you, you know, you look at the opposite of that, right? Baker Mayfield got shipped out of town when that happened. Oh, um, and he cooked. He was cooking this weekend. Yeah, he, I he, this weekend. he looked really good. And that, that's a guy that, like, I couldn't be happier for the situation he's yeah. in, how he's doing. I don't care if he never wins a Super Bowl. And, I I mean, I'm not going to say he doesn't care. He definitely wants to win. Um, yeah. But the situation mentally for him has to be, like, a million times better than it was yeah. in his previous places. And, and all it took was a few games in, in L.A. with Sean McVay to really turn people's heads for them to be like, yo, this guy can still do it. Yeah. This guy can still do it. So also helps when you get to have Mike Evans as your number one wide receiver. Oh well, yeah. And, and, and Godwin too. Like they're, they're yeah. both real good. Um, yeah, but no, the, I Cleveland, like they're just kind of a mess right now. Uh, and I, Micah Parsons making, this is going to be the year where Micah Parsons is just like, he's for 18 games, he's going to be like, or 17 games, he's going to be like, hey, pay me. Here's yeah. what I'm going to do. And he's going to just murder offensive lines. Mm -hmm. Murder them. Yeah. He's very, very physical. It's tough to beat him. But like Deshaun Watson taking the six sacks and throwing the two picks, like that was what killed them that game. I mean, and there, honestly, there could have been like four more sacks that he danced his way out of, well, you, which is wild. You know what's crazy, too, when you look at it? I, I mean, part of it is he hasn't played football in a long time. Um, yeah. The other part, he hasn't played good football in a long time. But also look at Dallas on their side of the ball. Like Dak's stats, if you look at it, like people would look at that and be like, well, he sucked. He didn't throw any touchdowns. He didn't need to. He nope. didn't need to. Like they, they really did not need to do anything Deshaun Watson just made it easy for them super yeah. easy um yeah no it, it's yeah I I almost want to see Jameis Winston in there yeah, man like because at least like he's gonna sling the ball he's at gonna least there's some passion dude yeah like that guy like, plays just, inspired like, why why wouldn't you want to see him play yeah it, you could just tell with Watson he just looks broken like that's a that you can tell when a quarterback doesn't have confidence anymore, and he had it. Micah Parsons put the nail in the coffin for that man. Mm. Like Micah yeah. Parsons made it his business to break him. You heard it here first. Yeah, Sean Watson is a broken man. He <laughs> is. Uh, okay, next, uh, the Jets won't make the playoffs. Um. So I watched the first half of this game because I had to sweat it out in our guillotine league. I just sweated out hard, which we'll talk about. Uh, <laughs> but the Jets just turned the ball over a bunch, and it, it, that really wasn't Rogers' fault, really. Like he just like Brees Hall fumbled, like he just a bunch of, and the it was just a bunch of weird stuff, and the Forty ers just kept running the ball on him. Mm -hmm. Like at one point they held it like twenty three out of twenty six plays. Yeah. Like there's not you not much you can do there, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, I mean, you look at it, they didn't even have McCaffrey. They didn't need him. They just they just kept running it over Which is and over wild and over. he didn't play last night. That he was a late scratch. If everybody drafted him number one, boy, I would have been so mad. Yeah, so yeah. Mad. I thought it was going to come down to guillotine, but my buddy didn't need McCaffrey to win. So uh, he still had McCaffrey starting and blanked him, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to do a new segment uh, called the Pulser of the Week, which is our top performer of the week. Um, do you want to start? Yeah, I'm actually, we talked about him a little bit ago, Baker Mayfield. Okay. Man, like he, it's just good. Like he got paid and like my first thought when he got paid, I was like, oh man, is he going to regress? Uh, now granted, part of it was playing Washington, who doesn't have what you say, what you call the best defense. But, like, you can tell he's just having fun out there. Like, he's he's hitting Evans. Like, he he and Evans have such a rapport already. There was one where he just dropped – I think it might have been the first touchdown where he just dropped a dime to get it to him. And you're like, oh, cool. This is the Baker Mayfield we saw in college and early on with Cleveland that made him so good. Mm -hmm. And it's just – that makes me really happy that he has found a place in Tampa where they love him. He loves them. Like, it, it's just, I like that. And yeah. that makes me so happy. And Todd Bowles, like, 
I think is a believer in him. You had Dave Canales that was there before. Now he's in, in Carolina, but yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't be happier for Baker really happy yeah. for him. Uh, for me now, listen, I could have gone Josh Allen, but I, I just, I wanted to have like a slightly deeper cut than Josh Allen. So I picked Cooper yeah. cup and, uh, now, uh, with with Puka Nakua hitting IR, like Cooper Cup's fantasy value just goes to the roof. But I mean, this yeah. this dude is just a dog. It's like people forgot last year. They were like, "Oh, he's got a hamstring. He's lost a step, like this and that." And no, nah, he'll never be the same. This is what happens to the guy's age and stuff. But like, he picked up right where he left off from that Triple Crown year. And I mean, he had this team very, very close to beating Detroit in Detroit. So yeah, that game that game went down to the wire. Yeah, it's wild, man. So like, I, I mean, I just look at the finishing stats he had. Right, fourteen catches, one hundred and ten yards, and a tutty. Like, not not a ton of yardage, but fourteen catches on it. And he also rushed twice for ten yards. Like, not that that matters, but like, what was staggering for me when you look at the box score, he had twenty one targets. That yeah. is insane. I yeah. cannot remember the last time I've seen someone someone have that many targets it was just it was wild man it, it felt like every time the rams had a like third and six third and seven it was just cup for eight and you're like oh man like just just double cup and then like they were and then they were at points it didn't matter he's, like cup and stafford have such a good rapport that like yeah, he's such an elite route runner too which yeah. is what makes him so good. Yeah, he's yeah, okay, he's a wide receiver. He's supposed to catch the ball. His hands are very good. But he's he is an elite route runner that like he'll just leave guys in the dust. The the touchdown pass that that he caught, it was <laughs> the, the route that he ran on that was just so funny. He lost the defender. That that guy was going into the end yeah. zone. Bare, you know, no one could catch him at that point, but it just yeah, kind of wild. So, we'll see what I expect more of an uptick for him. I don't know. Maybe he can get 30 targets in a game coming up here. Uh, Probably. But, he, he's going to have to because, yeah. like, with Nakua out, like, that's it's a big not deal. really anybody else that, like, on the for the Rams receiving core that you're, like, scared of. Yeah. Uh, Demarcus Robinson's pretty good. Uh, I think he kind of gets lost in the in the way, but he was good in Kansas City, and he's their kind of their yeah. third receiver they have. Uh, m- maybe he's going to step up and, and be able to do something there. But – uh, let's break down our upcoming previews that we have. We got three games we just want to talk about real quick. Uh, Buffalo at Miami. Uh, Miami gets one and a half. The over under is fifty and a half. Um, but you know, just to see the way Buffalo started the season, right? And I think it's obvious. Josh Allen's still that dude. I mean, I just I don't know how Miami's going to stop him. He wasn't that dude in the first quarter and a half of that Arizona game, though. Yeah, and he, then all of a sudden it was full... like, oh, I'm good now. You got the full Josh Allen experience. <laughs> Fumbles yeah. through a pay. Like, man, yeah. you got the full thing. And, like, even the commentator's like, well, this is the whole Josh Allen experience. And yeah. I'm like, but the four touchdowns like, made up for it. They made that fumble sure seem, seem very, uh, um, very easy to swallow. Yeah. No, he, uh, yeah, he's. I, I kept wondering, like, boy, they lost a lot of guys this offseason. And, like, their receiving room, receiver room's like a whole bunch of new dudes. Didn't really matter. It didn't. Yeah, I was a little disappointed, man, for all the talk of of Kincaid. And, like, I mean, just rightfully so. I mean, you look at Kincaid's last 11 games last year. He had nine games with at least six targets. I mean, that's that's steady, consistent. You know, Josh Allen's looking for him. He had two targets in this game. I mean, that that really needs to change. I thought if we were going to get a bigger game, I have Keon Coleman in one of my yeah. one of my leagues, and I I really thought he and I think he's going to have a big season. Yeah, and I just I thought he was going to have a big game against Arizona. He like he had a few catches, and you know he's a rookie, so it happens. Mm-hmm. Did better than Marvin Harrison Jr., which was wild. Yeah, uh, he just he kind of blanked. It was weird to to see that, but listen, it's going to take time. He's a rookie as well. Yeah, uh, and he's it's not like oh we're throwing in the towel on him. He's going to get it figured out. He is, yeah, because he's a worker. He's a grinder. He's he doesn't want things just given to him. So he's gonna figure it out. Uh, on defense, uh, man. Oh yeah, go ahead. I I was gonna say with my with the yeah I was gonna say the Bills on defense like it took them a minute to get going and like they didn't really have an answer for Kyler for a while and mm-hmm. I don't know if they really had an answer for him taking off 
and not a lot of people do. He's because he's I forgot how fast he is. Yeah, this is his first healthy season back in a couple of years, mm-hmm. and I forgot that I was like, oh, when he takes off, you're not catching him. Yeah, right. Forgot about that. It's like a baby um, toddler running through. You're not going to yeah. catch him. But you know the Bills when they had to like dig down deep, they got some stops. Yeah, and I was kind of impressed. That was a big game that they. They were down 17 nothing early, and mm-hmm. you were like, boy, are the Bills going to get routed? And they that was a that was a big game for them that they needed to win. Yeah. That, that set the tone really well. Josh Allen was like, hey, guys, get on my back. I'll take care of this. And it, I, I was actually really impressed with that win with Buffalo. So Yeah. I, I, it was yeah. good to see Von Miller come back uh, and, and yeah. be healthy. I really like him a lot. He's, not only is he like a very fun player to watch, but – I felt like he played pretty well. Um, and I hope they're able to kind of give Miami fits uh, in in terms of their offensive line. But we'll, we'll kind of see. I, I think, and I, I mean, I feel like it's a broken record. We've talked about this so much with Miami. Like, they've been, they are very good at beating up all the kids on the playground. But as soon as a bully comes on there, they get their asses kicked. And so, like, how do they figure out how to be able to get over the hump? Well, even like that Jacksonville game, they were getting punched in the mouth for a mm-hmm. while. And then Jacksonville just did – that touchdown where it was at uh, Etienne, like, fumbled it out of the end zone. Yeah. That would have iced the game. Yeah, it would have. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know what they do. I, I think that they they ran the ball pretty well. And I think that's got to be the that's gotta be the key is, like, getting it so – and I know this seems so – this is I, – I mean, I sound like a broken record, but, like, They've got to get into like third manageables, like third yeah. and three, third and mm-hmm. four, where then you're like, oh, are they going to run it? Or now we have to worry about Hill and Waddle. And then that's when Hill burns you. They just, that's need, when he burns you. They need to be able to do more than to rely on the big play from Waddle and Hill. They, they, they have to, yeah. they've got to be able to figure out the, the median of that and, and how to be able to, to figure it out. Um, A chan's banged up already. He sat out practice yesterday or Monday rather, but uh, yeah, you know, it just, I, I mean, hopefully they're able to figure things out. He wasn't really efficient on the ground. He made up for it with through the air, uh, but they've got to be able to get that figured out. Uh, who do you have uh, winning this game? Uh, Buffalo 28, 17, because wow, okay. I, th- we, I said this about Miami a lot last year, beat a team that's good. <laughs> and like win a big game. This is an early big game for them. Yeah. If they want, if they really actually want to win the division, they got to beat divisional foes, and this is where it starts. And I, I just don't trust that they can. Yeah, I, I don't. I similar to you, slightly off. I've got Buffalo thirty-one, Miami twenty-one. So I, yeah. I, I still think I still think Buffalo is able to figure it out. I just don't think they have enough on defense to be able to stop Josh Allen. He's just a force, man. He's going to turn it the ball just... over, but it, it, I mean, he just. He puts points up for an offense that is as good as Miami's. They settled for a lot of field goals against Jacksonville, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which yeah, including the game winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, but like I, yeah, no, they. I yeah, kind of something I worry about with them. Yeah, I love the reckless abandon that Allen runs with too. It's just like he doesn't gonna get him killed. Yeah, it, it probably will, but he's getting. <laughs> I think he got his hand X-rayed, so we'll see what happens with that. His left yeah. hand, left hand, so it's not a big deal, yeah. but. Um, next game we've got Cincinnati at Kansas City. I knew this was going to come up, but uh, Kansas City gets uh gets six points, and the over under is forty eight and a half. And I feel like this is really a tale of two stories, right? Like Kansas City looked really good in the opening week, Cincinnati did not. Um, but with Cincinnati, as we mentioned, notoriously slow starters at the beginning of the year. Uh, New England had the good defense, but they were without T Higgins and stuff. And I just I feel like. Since he doesn't need to beat Kansas City right now, they need to be able to beat him in the playoffs. And I would really like to see them, if they know they're not going to win this game, I'd like to see them try a few things in this game to see what they're going to do because they need to figure out that first they got to have an answer for Worthy. Uh, but they need to figure out how to be able to stop the run and what they're going to do. So I, I hope if they realize during this game, hey, listen, it's not going to work out for us. Let's try a few things to see what we can do. Um, but what, what do you think? I, I kind of I'm gonna push back a little bit because I think Cincinnati actually needs to win this game mm. because like they're already they're a little embarrassed like I'm sure people are giving them shit because like 
it's New England, and New England is clearly going to be a bottom barrel team this year, probably. And like, like I know the score doesn't really indicate it, but like for all intents and purposes, New England kicked the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. Like they just kind of ran it down their throat and like just kind of bullied them. Cincinnati has to at least, if they're not going to win this game, they at least need to hang with Kansas City to at least give themselves a the confidence that they can hang with good teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's key. And yeah. the problem is with Cincinnati is I again I don't know how you stop Chris Jones if your offensive line is not good because that man will wreak havoc as we saw in Week One. Yeah, he definitely will, will. wreak havoc and make your life hard. You got to have a plan for him for sure. Um, yeah, with with Kansas City, listen, I mean they've won they've won Super Bowls doing it different ways the last two years. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they come up with another way this year. Maybe they're doing the high flying uh, thing. Rasheed Rice looks awesome. Xavier Worthy looks awesome. Pacheco seems like he's still going to be Pacheco too. Pacheco had a couple big runs that like really kind of like kept Kansas City on the field longer and longer than they probably should have been. And, and that was really, I that was the thing that was shocking the most is I, they really, I think they're going to rely a lot on Pacheco this year. Well, th think about it. I mean, uh, New England ran for 170 yards against Cincinnati. I have a hard time believing the Chiefs aren't going to try to run the ball down their throat. Uh, oh, yeah. Especially, it's, it's going to chew up clock. Uh, yeah, they're still going to, Patrick Mahomes is still going to do his thing, but they're going to try to control the clock, uh, you know, with this. Yeah. Um, what do you got in this game? Uh, I got, I got... This is the last time I ever have picked. I'm gonna pick against the champs. I think it's Kansas City, and I think it's 31-21. Wait, against the champs? You said no, no. I'm with the champs. Sorry. Oh, okay. I, I think Kansas City. I picked against them last week. It's the last time I'm ever gonna do it. Okay. And you have yeah, it. The finishing is what? Kansas City 31. Yeah, 31-21. Oh, yeah, 31-21. Okay. Uh, I, I think, I think they're gonna put up points on the on this team. I really do. Okay. Yeah, I I actually have it gonna. It's gonna be a little bit different for me. Uh, I actually have them winning thirty eight twenty eight, uh, just because I I think Kansas City is gonna be able to to control the clock, put up a lot more points, yeah. uh, and it could turn into a shootout. But I really would like to see um, a nice shootout between them, some Chase, some Worthy, maybe some Rasheed Rice. Uh, that's what I want for Christmas. So they they, they need Higgins back. They, yeah, Cincinnati needs Higgins back to they, make this a game they definitely do uh yeah. the last game we're going to cover here is chicago at houston and kind of interesting houston's getting six and a half uh, the over under is 45 and a half uh, but basically mr hollywood goes to texas uh where everything is bigger and uh you know grats on the win against tennessee but like now you're facing a playoff team so i just i mean not to pick apart what he did um but because he didn't throw any picks or make any real big errors but it just wasn't pretty Right, like less than fifty percent passing for, uh, completion percentage. He went fourteen to twenty nine yeah. for ninety three. And to be frank, like they were really awful on offense. It was just if the defense wasn't there putting up the the touchdowns, I just I don't think they would have even been in that game. And I, I I'm I'm curious. Like they were losing at the beginning, what seventeen nothing, very similar to yeah. to what the Bills were. Um, but the Bills looked very different coming back than Chicago did. Um, and I just, I, did you see anything out of this team on offense that you felt inspired by or anything like that? I think there were a few plays where like Williams was able to kind of improvise and like, and it, so I, I think there is hope for him. I do. It's game one. Mm -hmm. Um, I do, I do worry a little bit. Like there was the Keenan Allen throw that he went, Keenan Allen's wide open and he like overthrew him. You're like, and I, I think a lot of that's jitters. Yeah, I, I really do. I, I I think that as the season goes, he'll get those reps, and I think he'll he'll be more poised. Um, that being said, a lot of a lot of two like the reason they were down early, like Chicago had that weird muffed uh, kickoff return, which was bonkers, mm -hmm. and then also with Bell Will Jones, Levis, yeah, 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 and then Will Levis throwing the dumbest interception I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the memes so, after were awesome for that. Oh, top tier. Yeah. Top tier. What I did, things I did like was like, you know, they needed on that last touchdown, they needed the two point conversion and 
Caleb Williams made the right read and like did what he had to. Mm-hmm. And so I think, I think he, he's going to be okay. I don't know if this is the week. though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not sure either. I mean, let's talk about Houston real quick. Like they, not only did they look pretty good on defense now, granted Anthony Richardson made some plays against them. Uh, they, they put up some, did. so they, they put up a few touchdowns and, and gave up some points in this game. But I just feel like, they have a ton of weapons on offense. Most importantly, like they they have a serious running back now with Mixon. And he's a dude, man. Like he put up yeah. Derrick Henry style numbers. 30 carries and he averaged what five uh, over 5 yards a carry. That's nuts, man. Yeah. I don't think they're going to need that from him every game. But I, I know, think but I think he can him- bring that to them every game. Yeah, I think it's it's an upgrade over what they had last year. Mm-hmm. And I think that now with Houston, you have to respect the run. You yeah, do, because last it, season you weren't respecting the run on them. No, you in, in like, addition to respecting C.J. Stroud, like they can't just stack the box against him. He's going to make them pay. So it's it's a lot, man. Were you worried a little bit with Stroud that he made some like dumb interceptions that luckily got called back because of penalties? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think he has more room to make mistakes this year than he did last year, uh, especially with them running the ball so well. So I expect them to be in some closer games, but I am, I am a believer in him, and I, I think he's that one guy. He's an ultimate competitor. I, I see a lot of. Uh, Joe Burrow in him where mm-hmm. they're they're just unafraid and he's ice cold now I'm not going to say that like he does he's not going to make some mistakes and he might cost them some games but he's going to hang it out there and, and try to win as many games as, as they can and I, I really think that they have one of the best teams in the AFC this year I, I'm, I'm again yeah. it's after one week but I I definitely have them in the top three i just don't know where i want to put them you know yeah i i think with them i think the expectations are really high on them this year and they're playing a first place schedule mm-hmm. so they're gonna play and they have a tough schedule this year yeah but also like they're they're expected to win a lot of games and like stroud's got to be a big part of that and like so and i understand it's, it's one week and so i'm not going to overreact but he just made some throws that you're like CJ Shroud last year wasn't making those throws. And I felt like he tried to do too much. Part of it, part of it was this too. And like this, we didn't talk about it earlier, but Indianapolis was able to get pressure on him. And that's something that in the past, Houston's been really good at protecting him. They didn't start out last season that way, but they ended last season that way. They, there was a lot of times that they, that that he had hands on them during the game. Uh, They had hands on him. Yeah during the game. And I, I just think honestly, like if you look at their defense too, Houston's defense, you can't be giving up big plays like that. That no. game's not even close. If they're, if they don't give up those big plays, not even, yeah, they gave up three fifty yard passing plays. Like yeah, that's, 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 you a can't lot. have that. That's a lot, man. And if yeah. you're going to like, I'm not saying Indianapolis is a bad team, but if you do that against a really good team, mm-hmm. you're cooked. You I, are cooked. I expect them to have a much better game against Chicago. Uh, Me too. And I think it's going to be a cleaner game too. Uh, I, I personally, I'll let you pick first on this. Who, who do you have winning this game? I think it's Houston thirty-four, Chicago seventeen. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. Oh man! So I uh, actually have Houston thirty-five, Chicago seventeen. And listen, I know that's a lot to predict because Chicago's defense is is their strong suit. Uh, but I, I just think they have so much to on offense right now it's going to be very difficult to stop them very difficult i think caleb williams will play better this week i do yeah i just i I think that houston's defense is going to pose a real problem yeah they're going to get some pressure on them all right and that's that's a tough thing um so yeah well we will see what happens this weekend uh let's let's uh wrap up with some fantasy some trivia <laughs> yeah so fantasy listen i i had a bitch in weekend i won in all three leagues did. it didn't get eliminated uh it just seems like i may kind of know what i'm doing uh maybe which feels really good but uh we both survived in guillotine which is really awesome so no punishment for either of us really <sighs> cool um but did you want to tell them about your particularly close call 
Yeah. So uh, this was before, I think I, I texted you yesterday, yesterday morning, my time. So like, you, you know, afternoon, your time. On and I was Sunday. like, man, on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Sunday. Yeah. And I was like, man, I, I think I'm going to get eliminated this week. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you you did the, like you're a really good friend and you're like one of my best friends and you were like nah man you'll be fine like and i know you were being nice but like and i don't think that you believed me no i and then, okay like, so i believed you but i didn't want you to not get eliminated <laughs> I, I i even said it to my wife i was like man i really hope al loses <laughs> but just because i i wanted i wanted to win the bet more than i wanted yeah. you to to stay in the league so it was uh yeah that's that's something night i i was already plotting donut strategies on which dozen to eat and i was like <laughs> i'm looking for the light ones like you're looking really ideally you want to do 12 french crullers because those are light and airy oh you were gonna Absolutely. do that instead of the munchkins if the french crullers were an option yeah oh yep. man okay yeah man tasty yeah but uh yeah no i and i had to i don't so I had to work this morning at 3.30 in the morning. So usually watching the Monday night game isn't going to really be an option. But I had to sweat out the first half of that game because I had Brock Purdy and Debo Samuel. And, like, Debo Samuel scored a touchdown. Great. But Brock Purdy at one point was, like, three for nine. And I was like, are you kidding me? And so at halftime I looked, and I just needed Brock Purdy to complete one pass. That's That's all I needed. Yeah. But I wasn't so sure based on what I had watched in the first half that that was going to happen. And I went to bed <laughs> being like, well, it's up to the fantasy gods now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I rest my fate with them. And uh, yeah, it's I'll tell you, like, that's it's kind of wild. I'm, I'm excited this week. It's too bad we had to chop someone this week, but that's the way it goes in a guillotine league. Yeah. So, someone else is up this next week. So um, I'm excited for that for sure um anything else you want to mention about fantasy at all uh i do play in the bennett league i played john our friend john this week <gasps> oh, uh oh so you should man. go check out when you get a second the matchup and what i changed my team name to oh my goodness this is gonna be yeah. awesome what, what yeah. is it just so the the fans uh, know? you suck dummy you suck dummy very good yeah very good it's gonna I'm be gonna, hilarious if i lose by by 50 i'm gonna screenshot gonna that to hilarious. john and be like did you see al change his team name he's gonna get so fired up by it i can't wait oh I man wait. all right so with trivia oh but before i and i feel bad saying this but like not only did i i beat you in, in our head-to-head matchup but i also beat my uncle roger who was talking so much smack i beat him by almost 60 points like oh. it was it was brutal absolutely brutal so it was uh yeah i said welcome to the league son uh, <laughs> we you and i both thought he was gonna go in our guillotine league. yeah i really he thought so somehow too. Survived. by one point one yeah. point so uh yeah. very interesting uh but uh we'll move on to trivia and uh, we had mentioned him earlier cooper cup getting to 21 targets in week one um, so my question is, who has had the most targets in an NFL game ever? Uh, so drop that in the comments below. We'll make sure we hit it up next week with the answer. Uh, that way uh, you can test your knowledge, see if you know that. And don't yeah. Google it. Uh, you know, try to be a try to be a real G yeah. and, and guess it on your own. Um, yeah. Anything else you wanted to cover today? Nah, man. I, I'm just glad football's back. Yeah, football is back. Uh, we will be back next week giving you more mm-hmm. NFL coverage. And we'll also tap into major league baseball. Cause we've taken a little bit of time off. Things are getting yeah. very interesting. It looks like my Braves are on the back burner. Boy. Uh, very yeah. scary. Well, that's what happens when the Mets win nine in a row. Uh, yeah. So uh, we'll, we will see what happens with that, but real uh, quick, I, yeah. I did want to say it was nice having pro football on Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Monday. Like yeah. that was real nice. I know that's not going to happen all the time, but man, was it nice to have. Hey, I'm holding out for Thanksgiving, oh. man. I can't wait. Cool. God, yeah. I tell you, I can stuff my face full of food and watch four games. Great. Sign me up. Great. Sign me yep. up. All right. Well, listen, uh, it was great doing another one. Love you, brother. And uh, I will catch you soon. All right. Peace. Peace.